we're going to have a look now at why it is or how it is that stars and the sun are able to continually give out so much energy. We're going to talk about the main sequence stars. This is the main uh, group of stars that uh, when we have a look at the, uh, the universe like this, the main sequence stars are the majority, more or less the majority. And they're called the main sequence stars because, well, here they are here in this, what we call the HR diagram. And they're called the main sequence stars because most of them are there and most stars are going under the same sort of reactions there for billions of years. So if we look into the... Uh, the uh, So if we look into the sky, most of those stars are main sequence stars and they are carrying out the basic reaction, nuclear reaction, which produces a huge amount of energy. We can even see our own sun in the main sequence there. And here it is undergoing a whole host of nuclear reactions, but there is a, a, a group, there's the fusion of hydrogen. And that's the big one. That's the one which produces most of the energy that we get from the stars and the sun. The overall reaction that we're looking at that produces a lot of this energy is the combination of four hydrogen nuclei combining to form one helium atom or one helium nucleus along with two positrons two neutrinos and two photons of gamma radiation. Now, the thing about these reactants, if we call them that, is their mass. If we find the mass of those four and the mass of these objects here, we find that the mass of those is less than the mass of these. In other words, that looks like a break in the law of conservation of mass, but it isn't. What happens there is the mass, the, the extra mass, the missing mass, and that has a particular term, it's called the mass defect. That mass is turned or becomes energy. And this is Einstein's famous equation, E equals mc squared. This equation enables us to work out how much energy comes when we have a mass defect, when we have a mass that is lost in these nuclear reactions. If we have the mass in kilograms and c here, now that c stands for the velocity of light in metres per second, which of course is 3 by 10 to the 8th. And that gives us the energy there in joules. Now, if we think about the size of this figure here, 3 by 10 to the 8th, and the squaring, we're squaring that number, we get a massive number of joules of energy. And this is where the energy from the stars and the sun comes from, from the conversion of mass into energy. More on that later.